this is Lieutenant Tim Mueller here. Uh, so I've decided to do the rest of my videos a little bit differently. Uh, I got a new tablet here with some really nice uh, drawing software. And I think I can crank out a couple more videos, uh, probably better quality, better visuals at least, and with a lot higher speed. Uh, so right now we're going to go through grounding and stranding. Uh, the ways that I'm going to do my videos is kind of like a newspaper format, if you can see here. Uh, so we're going to start like right in the middle. It's going to be an intro, kind of what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be looking at. And then we're just going to kind of continue along all these different uh, tiles here until we finally get to an example problem at the very end. And we'll show you exactly how to approach one of these problems. Uh, just using the tablet is much easier to visualize things and kind of show you what's going on rather than drawing on a whiteboard. So with that, let's get started. All right, so like I said, my name is Lieutenant Timothy Mueller, and we're going to be talking about grounding and stranding, a very, very important thing, you know, something you hope you never need to use, but when you do need to use it, you need to get things right the first time. So essentially what we're looking at is when a ship runs aground, you know, a ship normally, on a normal operation, it's floating in the water, floating in the ocean, uh, lake, whatever it might be, and somehow, some way, through human error, some technology fault in the navigations, whatever it might be, your ship is actually going to run aground. It hits the ground, and now it starts to strand. What are you going to do? Uh, you, as a DCA, is extremely important that you know if the ship is in danger of capsizing or is not in danger of capsizing. We're going to be learning about that. We're going to be learning about the stability in general, kind of what's going on behind the scenes. Then we're going to look at the math behind all this madness, kind of see how do we find out exactly when the ship might be sinking. Then we're going to go through a step-by-step -step example right down here at the problem here. That's going to be at the very end. Uh, just some quick introductions to what we're going to be talking about. Critical draft. So you know that draft is essentially the distance from the keel up to the waterline, or essentially how much of the ship is underneath of the waterline at any given time. Well, when a ship is a ground or it's uh, stranded up on the ground, then it's going to be something called the critical draft. And the critical draft is when the GM or the metacentric height of the ship equals zero. When the ship is a ground or when it's stranded, you, know, the, you still have water supporting the ship. You still have this hydrostatic pressure that's pushing the ship one way or the other. So when we hit a GM equals zero, or a negative metacentric height, then the ship doesn't want to right itself. It actually wants to try and capsize itself. And when the ship is you know, up, up on the ground so light, then the ship doesn't want to you know, lull like we had seen before. The ship actually just wants to capsize all the way over. So we need to know when exactly that is going to happen. So first off, what are we talking about here? We're talking about stranding and grounding. So first off, grounding is basically when a ship hits rock, sand, whatever it might be, but it's able to successfully refloat itself. It's able to back down on the engines, and it's able to come off of those rocks, and there's no issue with the ship. Now, stranding is something a little bit different. Uh, stranding is something when you hit the rocks and the ship tries to back off the rocks, back off the beach, but it's not able to. Then the ship becomes stranded, on the beach. Uh, this can be really dangerous if a ship has a mechanical malfunction and the, sh and the engines aren't able to actually get it off the, sh off the beach. Then uh, you could start to run into the situation where the waves and the current actually start to push the ship up further onto the land and the ship gets more and more stuck, more and more stranded. So those are the two things we're basically going to look at here. Uh, if our ship gets stranded, we need to know if it will survive the ebb and flow of the local environment. Uh, low tide is something that can capsize your ship. If the tide gets low enough, then the ship isn't able to create its own writing arms. And then when something on the outside, say a wave or a wind, tries to uh, incline the ship any bit, then the ship will want to capsize rather than try and right itself. Just because we're up on the beach doesn't mean that the buoyancy is not in effect anymore. The buoyancy is still in effect, but the lower the tide, the less of an effect the buoyancy has towards righting the ship.
We're going to be talking mostly about stranding here because stranding is when a ship is unable to back off the beach, back off the sandbar, back off the reef, whatever it might be. And now we start to get into a situation where the stability might start to be questionable. So how can stranding cause a ship to capsize? When a ship is stranded, and the tide goes out, so we start to approach low tide. The ship physically weighs the same, but when we have the water level around it drop, we're actually losing displacement. We have a loss of displacement. So let's say our ship originally weighs 4,000 long tons. When it's floating freely in the water, just like this, the ship is displacing 4,000 long tons. But then when we ground, the ship actually, it still weighs 4,000 long tons, but now all the weight of the ship isn't being held up by the pressure around it by the water. Some of it is being held up by the ground, and the rest of it is being held up by buoyancy with the water around it. And then as the tide goes out, remember our ship still weighs that 4,000 long tons, but it needs to be distributed between the tons of ground, which we'll learn about here in a second, and the buoyancy around it. So on top of lost displacement, like we had talked about, the ship is also experiencing a virtual rise in the center of gravity. So we had talked about virtual rise when we talked about free surface effect and free communication effect. So you should be pretty familiar with the concept of the center of gravity virtually rising. So let's take a look at the uh, conditions before and immediately after a stranding condition. All right, so the original condition right here, we have a ship freely floating. It has a meta center at some point and the center of gravity at some point as well. All right, ship is floating freely and we see we got the sand and the rocks right there. Now, immediately after grounding, we ground, try to back down. We try to get off as much as we can or as much as we're allowed, but we find out we just can't. The ship is now stuck. We are stranded and now, you know, also called hard aground, uh, this different terms for it, but the actual term is stranding. You are stranded. All right, so make a note, you have the water line right here. It's right about the same point as what we had before, but now the ship is aground. So what is going to happen to the water line as we approach low tide, and what's going to happen to the center of gravity and the meta center? All right, so everything that we learned about before kind of stays the same. So the tide is going to go out. So the water line is going to go from some point up here, it's going to go down. So we know that the water line goes down, and the center of buoyancy is going to follow the water line. So the center of buoyancy is going to go down as well. Well, we know the meta center goes opposite of the center of buoyancy, so that's going to make it go up. As we see here, we have kind of like a ghost meta center there, and then we have M1 being our new meta center. And then we also have a virtual rise. And we'll talk about that here in a second, but essentially the end result is that gravity is going to go up. So we have the original point of gravity and the new location of gravity, so it's up a little bit. And as we had talked about before, if M and G both go up, then the metacentric height, GM, is going to decrease. So as you notice, GM is getting smaller and smaller as they both travel up. Now, if G gets too high, then it can go at the same level or above the meta center, which we know is very, very bad. We don't want our G at, or we don't want it anywhere near the meta center, especially not above. We want it nice and safe below the meta center with that positive metacentric height. So it looks like the condition of the ship, so where G and M are, really depend on where this water line is. As the water line goes down, we get into a worse situation. As the water line goes up, it looks like we get into a better situation. So is there some way that we can find out, something that we can look at, something that everybody on the ship knows how to read in order to say, all right, we are going to be in a very bad situation or we're going to be in a very good situation. So how do we find out exactly if our ship is in danger or if we're actually kind of safe and we don't have such an urgency to start to uh, make conditions to abandon ship. So first, let's recap what knowledge we already have. There's really not too much that we need to add on to what we already have. The concept of critical draft really builds off of a lot of things we already know, but they're just kind of mentioned a different way. So first off, we understand virtual rise just from our talks about free surface effect and free communication effect and a couple other things. We know that the physical center of gravity is still at some point. 
However, the ship behaves as though the center of gravity is actually a little bit higher than what we calculated at with our KG1 equation. And that virtual rise comes from free surface effect, just the fact that we have water sloshing port to starboard inside of our tanks, or free communication effect with water rushing in and rushing out, while well, this, our stranding situation, is actually another cause of a virtual rise. So I mentioned our KG1 equation before. We're going to be revisiting it. However, it's going to be just a little bit different than we had seen before. What we've seen before is this right here. KG1 equals the original moment of the ship. So the KG times W, you got a force times a distance, W being the force and KG being the distance. Then we're going to add the force times distance of some other weight, whatever it might be that we added or subtracted. Then we have the WF, the final displacement of the ship. So keep those in mind for when we get to the stranding calculation sheet. Also, we need to remember how to read a draft diagram function of form because we need to find the displacement as well as the KM. We're going to need to find the metacentric or the height of the metacenter, I'm sorry, the height of the metacenter from our draft diagram function of form. And all we need to know is the forward draft and the aft draft in order to find those. If you forget what that looks like, it looks something like this. So if you remember, it has those five axes, something kind of similar. A lot of different ships have different formats for the draft diagram function of form, but essentially the operation is just about the same. You're gonna find forward draft here, aft draft here, then you're gonna connect them with a diagonal line and then from that diagonal line, wherever it meets some axis, uh, you know, according to the different directions that you have for your DDFF, draw a straight line over, and you read that straight line. And that straight line is going to give us our average draft or a mean draft, the displacement, as well as the height of metacenter, our KM. Now, what knowledge are we going to gain in this lesson? What do we not know that we have to build upon what we do know to get to answering our original question, will we survive some stranding incident? What are we gonna gain? We're gonna find out how to use a grounding calculation sheet. We're gonna find out how to calculate tons of ground. And we're also gonna find out how to, cr how to calculate critical draft. So some things here that we need to learn for our new, new knowledge, some definitions that we have to introduce. So first off is tons of ground. Now, before we kind of get into it, think about this. You have a ship, and I mentioned it before, we have a ship that's 4,000 long tons. No matter how high it sits up on the ground, whether there's water all around it or it's completely high and dry, that ship is still weighing 4,000 long tons. But the upward force from buoyancy and the upward force from the beach have to match it. As the water goes down, as the ship loses buoyancy, you have an increase in the amount of, in the amount of upward force from the beach. So tons of ground is just that. It is how much weight is currently being supported by the ground, or essentially how much tons of the ship is on the ground. You can see right here in this little diagram, let me blow it up a little bit. The ship's weight is going to remain the same the entire time. Like I mentioned, 4,000 long tons, whatever it might be. It is being supported by the water around it and the beach. Now, if the water line is directly correlated to how much buoyancy we have and how much displacement, then as that water line goes down, our displacement goes down the amount of support that the ship has for uh, or from the water is decreasing. But if the ship is staying still, that means that the force from the ground has to increase. That's going to be a very, very important topic that we're going to cover here in a second, but we need to know that the ship's weight is kind of a combination between the remaining displacement and the tons of ground. Now we'll go over here to critical draft. Critical draft, like I mentioned before, is the draft where if the tide falls below, the ship will have a negative GM. Essentially, there's some point 
right here. We'll just say that's the critical draft. There's some point where if the water line goes below that point, the ship has a negative GM. As long as the water line stays above that point, the ship is going to have a positive GM. But when that water line is directly on that point, then we have a uh, zero GM. When we're in that neutral stability condition, we have our critical draft. So the end result of everything we're talking about today is how are we going to find this critical draft? How are we going to find this threshold to where if the water line gets lower than it, the ship is going to capsize? Let's revisit this concept of tons of ground. Now, we see this ship is just freely floating right now. Uh, there's no effect from the ground on the displacement of the ship. It's just floating, 100% displacement. The ship is originally displacing 3,000 long tons. We see here, this is the green bar. This green bar is going to represent the weight of the ship. The blue bar here is going to represent the displacement of the ship. Essentially, the green is how much force the ship is pushing down, and then the blue bar is how much force the water is pushing up on the ship. All right, so we have the ship, like I said, normal operation. Now let's run this ship aground. Let's get it stranded. So I'm gonna make a transition here, but take a look right around there. We're gonna see that we lose displacement and we gain tons of ground. And I'll do it twice for you. So you see there, now the ship is has just run aground. And we've lost a little bit of displacement from the fact that we are now supported a little bit by the beach. So let's look at that transition again. All right, so there's the ship freely floating, and then boom, it hits the rocks and we've lost some displacement. So here, we express tons of ground as just that, tons. So if we wanted to find out how many tons of ground the ship is, well, right here just says 4%, that's just an example for example's sake, but let's take that, let's run with it. 4% of 3,000 long tons is gonna to be 120 long tons. So we would say that our tons of ground at this time tons of ground equals 120 long tons. So as you can tell, we can kind of say that tons of ground equals the original displacement of the ship minus the current weight when the ship is aground. This WO is going to be my original displacement and WA is my uh, current displacement. So see here, displacement here is 96%. If the total weight of the ship, 3,000 long tons, we just take 3,000 minus 96% of uh, 3,000, so 2,880, and we're going to get our tons of ground, which is just going to be original displacement minus what my current displacement is take this one step further. Let's say the ship is still stranded and now the tide is going out. So we had talked about before when the tide goes out that means the water line is going down along the ship. That means that B goes down, M is going to go up. And I told you that G virtually rises. So we have this loss of displacement. Essentially what it kind of acts as is a weight removal from zero. We have this force pushing up on the ship and that can actually be modeled as a weight removal from zero. And we'll get into that equation here in a little bit. But as long as you kind of conceptualize that G is going up, then you'll be fine for right now. So let's take a look at when the ship is still stranded, but the water line goes down. Also, keep an eye out right here. All right, I'll do that one more time just for you to see. 
So there's our original condition. And now the tide has gone out to a certain spot. We're still good. We still have a positive GM, but the GM has decreased. M goes up, G goes up, but G goes further and faster. So G is going to catch up to M before M kind of runs away from it. We also see that we have an increase in our tons of ground. We've lost displacement, but we've gained tons of ground. The tons of ground is always just the original displacement minus my current displacement. So I'll give you a second to kind of think of it, but what would you think, let me change colors here. What would you think, just looking at this, we don't have any percentages like we did before, but what do you think the tons of ground is? All right, so it looks like from these little bars here, it looks like our displacement is about eh, 2,100 long tons, right about there, not exact. And the original weight of the ships, so the original displacement was 3,000. So the tons of ground is just 3,000 minus 2,100, or down here in the bottom left, My tons of ground is just 900 long tons, which means that of the 3,000 long tons that the ship weighs, 900 is being supported by the beach, and 2,100 is being supported by the water around it. That's a very important concept, because as this displacement goes down, GM is decreasing. If it gets to a certain point, we are going to lose the ship. Now, how do we find out our tons of ground? Well, every morning or you know, on a very regular basis, you should be calculating the displacement of the ship while you're underway. So you should already know, you know, when you wake up or after the new meal, whatever it might be, you should already know what your W naught is. And this is over here. You should already know what your W naught is. And the displacement, you can just get from your draft diagram function of form. Like I mentioned before, we need to know how to use that in order to get anywhere with critical draft. All right, so it looks like we have everything that we need. Let's go one bit further and find out what happens as we have a critical draft. All right, so this was what we were before. The tide had started to recede. Now let's take a look at critical draft. So here's the transition. Now we see that we have G and M both at the same height above the keel. You can see right down here, that was the original point of M or the previous point of M. And this here was the previous point of G. We've also seen our tons of ground. I'm going to do the transition again so you can see it if you weren't looking exactly at this point. But we see the tons of ground has increased or more importantly, our displacement has dropped. So let's do that transition again. All right, so here we are uh, while the tide is decreasing and then it gets to a certain point and it hits our critical draft. And now we have this. We have an in, a decrease in displacement, an increase in tons of ground, and our ship still weighs 3,000. Don't forget that, it still weighs 3,000. But now our tons of ground looks like it's right around like 1,500 or something like that. Lost so much displacement that now our G and M are at the same location. Now the ship has no tendency to right itself. And you can see there's really not much water around here to actually try to buoy the ship back up and right the ship back to an even keel. If the ship inclines any bit, it's going to want to capsize all the way over. How do we find our critical draft? How do we find out if our draft falls below nine foot three, for example, we have a negative GM? We're gonna use something called the stranding sheet. All right, so the stranding sheet is a convenient way to organize all the pertinent information regarding stranding and also for finding critical draft like we so desperately need. All right, so this is what it looks like. It looks a little confusing, but in actuality, there's no new information that we really need. All right, so we see a few things here. 
Uh, we got an original condition before stranding. DM, just our mean draft. W naught, that's our original displacement. KG naught, that's my original height of gravity from the keel. And original KM, that's something I can get off of the DDFF. I see an equation here, but it really is no different than that KG1 equation I mentioned before. Remember when I said that this virtual rise is like a weight removal from zero? Well, if you look back to that original equation for KG1, you're going to see that this equation is exactly the same as that. But our KG, the small KG, equals zero, so we don't even have to worry about that second set of parentheses. We do see something new, though, and we see this WA, and that's our weight while aground at that specific point. We see a couple tables here. We had draft mean, we had WA, then we see KM, KG, and GM, all things that we are already very familiar with. If you look right here, it actually gives us another equation, KM minus KG equals GM. Then we also see something right here. It's a little graph. That is going to be what we use to find out exactly what our critical draft is. Now let's break down this stranding sheet into all the different sections and talk about exactly what the sections are. Then we're going to go through all the steps that we need in order to find our critical draft, which is going to be down here. All right, I'm going to turn on a layer. There's going to be a lot of color to it, so don't get too intimidated by it because it's really everything that we already know, but just a small different application. All right, so right here we have the stranding sheet that was before, but we see that's broken down into six different sections or uh, parts, whatever you might want to say. All right, so number one. Number one, this is our initial pre-stranding conditions. This is where we're going to put our original mean draft, original displacement, the original height of the metacenter, and the original height of center of gravity. Now, where do we find those? We can get those from stranding so or uh, stability software if we have that, but let's say we don't have that. DM, W0, and KM are all things that you can get off your draft diagram function of form. KG is something that you will have to hand calculate if you don't have software. You'll have to hand calculate what your KG was. These are all things that a, a prudent DCA should know prior to, or I'm sorry, after waking up in the morning or afternoon meal, whenever it might be. Uh, just make sure that these are all, this is all information that you know and are very familiar with prior to something, you know, God forbid, a stranding event happens. Now, number two, we see it right here. This is it's the KG1 equation, but it's been modified for stranding. I mentioned that there is something new here WA. WA is the weight of the ship, or I'm sorry, the displacement of the ship while aground. KGV stands for KG virtual. KG naught and W naught, that's the original height of gravity and the original displacement of the ship. Here is empty brackets. We know that these numbers are not going to change. The condition that the ship was before grounding is not affected by the after grounding. So we're going to put those values into the bracket, but we do know that our displacement is going to change throughout the entire uh, ebb and flow of the tides around us. So this WA value is going to change based off of what our mean draft is. So we got to be very careful with how we approach that. Number three, zoom out a little bit here. Number three is going to where, be where we put our post stranding information. All right, so our post stranding information, zoom back in. We really need our mean drafts. These are just things that if we know what our draft is immediately after grounding, then we just assume, okay, what's six inches beneath that? What's six inches beneath that? What's another six inches? What's another six inches? We're basically simulating the, the current and ebb of the tide going out and dropping that water line. We also need 
the displacement of the ship at these different mean drafts. This is where uh, our DDFF comes in. We can use the DDFF to find our displacements given drafts. And same thing with KM. We can find our KM given drafts. Zoom out here to see what number four is. Four is just the results from number two. So we are going to take the equation number two and the result is going to go down here in four. But the thing is, this WA changes with all of our mean drafts. So we see here, we have here, there's a WA, then you know, here, there's a WA, here, there's a WA. So that WA changes, which means our KGV is gonna change as well. Essentially the way we're gonna approach this is we're gonna look at this first cell so right here, we're going to plug that in to this equation. Remember, this number right here doesn't change. This number is what we plug that WA into. See WA right there. Then we're going to get some result, and we're going to put that result into the first line of KGV right here. Then we're going to do the exact same thing, but instead of using that first row, we're going to use different rows. So let's say we go here, that second row, we're going to go up into the KGV equation. We're going to work that number, and I'm going to put that right in the second column, or sorry, the second row. Then we go to a third row. We're going to put that into the KGV equation. And we're going to put that in the third row right there. All right. So now that we have, all right. So now that we have our KGV column all filled out, let me go back to yellow here. All right. So now that we have KGV all filled out. All we have to do is fill in this section number five. Now, what is section number five? Let's zoom out here. This is our final results for GM. Now the final results for GM, we look here, we have an equation, KM minus KGV equals GM. So all we have to do is we just go by, is we go row by row. Zoom in here, sorry about that. We do KM minus KG equals GM. KM minus KG equals GM. KM minus KG equals GM. And we go all the way until this column is completely full, or we ha or have exhausted all the information that we were given. All right, so this column, GM, is actually extremely important because that's what we're trying to find we're trying to find when this equals zero, if it equals zero at all. So that is where this big section number six comes into play. Zoom out a little bit. Six is a graphical method to find the draft where GM equals zero. What's going to happen here, all we need is, let me zoom in on the graph. Get rid of the layers. We need the mean drafts, which are already up here. And we need our GMs, which are already up here. The DMs, the mean drafts, are going to go on these thick lines. And the GM, we're going to plot using this axis right up here. Now you'll notice we got zero, we got plus one, we got plus two, minus one, and minus two. Up here in number five, we might have some numbers that are greater than that, might have like plus three, plus four, whatever it might be. But we are really only caring about the things or the drafts 
when our GM is close to zero. So essentially all you do, you have your mean drafts on these lines, you put your GMs, let's put a couple example dots down so you can see exactly what this looks like. All right, let's say you had points that lined up just like this. And you had mean drafts like this, 12 foot zero, 11 foot six, 11 foot zero, 10 six. You can draw a straight line. Wherever that line crosses zero, that is gonna be your critical draft. Let's get that six out of the way. There you go. So wherever this line crosses, we're gonna draw a straight line over and we're gonna read what our draft is. In this case, it looks like it's gonna be right around 11 foot two, 11 foot three, right in that area. All right, so we would say that our critical draft equals 11 foot two, 11 foot three which means that when the ship grounds and the tide goes out, if our water line gets beneath 11 foot two, 11 foot three, then there's a huge cause of concern because the ship is gonna be in a negative GM situation. All right, I kind of breezed through the steps to it really quickly. So let's go back down here and look at exactly what the steps are for using this. Step one, we're going to place our pre-stranding info in number one right here all right then number two in step two from the ddff remember if you don't if you're not exactly sure on what i'm talking about ddff or how to get displacement and km go back into your notes go back into your lessons because that is extremely important a lot of people mess that up because maybe they're not familiar with it or they're not exactly sure or very confident on exactly how to use it. So from the DDFF, we're gonna place simulated draft measurements as well as corresponding displacements and KMs in three. All right, that green three. So we got mean drafts that go in here. We have our displacements that correspond to those mean drafts right there. Then we have the KMs that go along with those mean drafts and we put them in there. All right, also, we're gonna place the drafts on the thick lines to the left of number six. All right, so we're talking about, we're going to number six right now, so we're talking about these thick lines right here. We're gonna put our mean drafts in there. And like I mentioned, we have an example problem coming up where you can see how all of this works together. All right, step three, you're going to take your values in the WA column, right here in three, this column right here. We're going to one by one place them into the equation in number two, and then place that, and then place that final result in number four. If you take the value from the first cell, the answer is going to go in the, or I'm sorry, in the first row, the answer is going to go in the first uh, row right there. The WA that you take from the third cell or the third row, the answer is going to go in the third row right there, just like that. All right, next up, we're going to calculate the values for five. So we're going to calculate our GMs by just subtracting KM minus KGV. As we see down here, we got KM minus KG equals GM. That's exactly the same equation that we're using. Then we're gonna plot these GMs from five. From five goes into the chart area of six. Remember, we already have our drafts right down there. So now we're filling in the rest of this chart. So like I mentioned, you're gonna have a couple of dots and you're gonna have a straight line Wherever that straight line crosses zero, we're getting into step six now. Wherever that line crosses zero, that's going to be our critical draft. All right, so it's 
No, it might be a little awkward to use the first couple of times you do this. Uh, definitely takes practice, but if you're able to visualize exactly what's going on, then it's much easier. Actually, let's take a quick visual as to exactly what's going on right now. All right, so really our biggest concern in finding critical draft is that GM. If you remember back, that was that uh, section five of the stranding sheet. Remember, GM equals KM minus KG. KM is something that we got from our draft diagram and function of form. KG, that's kind of like that KGV right there. And then GM is just KM minus KG. The difference between them gives us the result that we're trying to find. And we're trying to find the point, the draft, where this GM equals zero. All right, so here's our example problem. Just gonna zoom in a little bit on that. Our ship is floating underway with an original KG of 10 feet, an original KM of 13 feet, and an original displacement of 2,592 long tons. Suddenly, you hit a sandbar and you're hard aground. The ship is now stranded. The small boat crew, you put the small boat over the side, and it reports that your mean draft is currently at nine foot. The bridge states that low tide is going to be two feet lower than it currently is. DDFF info is given below. Find your current tons of ground and the ship's critical draft. All right, we learned about tons of ground and we learned about critical draft, so we know how to solve this. One thing that's a little bit different is right here. This is just the info that you get from your DDFF. When the ship's mean draft is nine foot six inches, the ship weighs 2592, and we have a KM of 13. That's what we were originally. If you remember, 2592, KM of 13 feet right up here. All right, but if the tide goes out six inches, so it goes from, our waterline goes from nine foot six to nine foot zero. At this nine foot zero point, the ship only displaces 2,306 long tons, and the KM is only 13.14 feet. Now if it drops another six inches, going to eight foot six, then the ship only displaces 2,020 long tons, and my KM is 13.28. Drops another six inches, that's gonna be the displacement. Then it goes down to seven foot six. We're gonna have 14.48. All right. Your mean draft is currently nine foot. The bridge states that the low tide is at two feet. So that means the lowest that the waterline is going to get is two feet lower than nine feet which means the water line is going to go all the way out to seven feet. But the uh, GMs, they go in a very straight line. So we might not have information for seven foot zero, but this is all that we have right now. Let's see if we can find our critical draft. All right, so what we need to do is we need to go back up. Using our stranding sheet, we got to put all these steps in place. And we gotta find where our critical draft is gonna equal zero. All right, so to solve this problem, first we need to find our tons of ground. Remember the tons of ground is just our original displacement minus the current displacement. And we were given that our current draft is at nine foot. That means that our tons of ground also referred to as a little TA right here, equals 2,592 minus 2,306, which equals 186 long tons. Now, where we get that in the solution prompt, let's zoom out a little bit and go over there. Get rid of that. 
All right, so you can see the original displacement is in the blue, it's highlighted in blue, right there. The current displacement, well, I gotta kind of read into it a little bit. The small boat crew reports that our mean draft is currently nine foot. At nine foot, our displacement is 2,306. So, the tons of ground at that immediate point in time is 186 long tons. So what does that mean in a little bit more detail? Our ship, which remember it originally weighed 2,594, I'm sorry, 2,592 long tons. It's now being supported by the ground and the water, but the ground is supporting 186 long tons and the water is supporting 2,306 long tons. All right, now we need to find the critical draft. Will our ship survive low tide? Uh, rewriting our DDF info, or I'm sorry, DDFF info into the stranding sheet. Here's our stranding sheet right here, but we need to take this information and put it into that stranding uh, calculation sheet. Now, where does that information go? Right here. There's a lot right there, so we need to break it down. Here is our original information right here. Our original information goes right there. We knew that KG naught and W naught are not going to change. So we're going to place that value. So 2592 times 10. 2592 is my W naught. 10 is my KG naught. So you're going to put that value right in the brackets right there. Then let's say I know that right now we're at 9 foot. So let's say the tide goes out 6 inches. Then it goes out another 6 inches. And it goes out another 6 inches. Let's see what the trend is and see if we need to do any more work. Or maybe the critical draft occurs at, say, 7 foot 9 or 8 foot 2. Then we don't need to go all the way to 7 foot. We know that we're going to hit our critical draft before low tide. So all that information from the DDFF, we're going to put right into this table right here. So we have our mean draft of 9 foot 0. We weigh 2,306. And our KM is 13.14. Then at eight foot six, the ship weighs 2,020 long tons, and the KM is 13.28. And we just continue putting in that information right there. But don't forget this, uh, this area right here. We have to put our mean drafts right there. So we got nine foot, eight six, eight foot, and seven six. All right, now we gotta start calculating our KGVs. We gotta start filling in this table right here. To do that, we're gonna use this equation. As we see with this equation, we need WA. We're gonna get our WAs from right here. All right, so we're gonna be working on this cell right here. We wanna fill that one in. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna take this WA right there, we're going to plug it into WA right there. So we're going to go 2,520 minus, or I'm sorry, divided by 2,306. So let's kind of get that drawn out here. 25920 divided by 2, 3, 0, 6. Now you're going to plug that into your calculator and you're going to get 11.24. All right, so now that we know that, now that we know that that's 11.24, in order to find our GM, all we got to do is KM minus KGV equals GM. 
So 13.14 minus 11.24, and that's going to give me 1.9. So when the waterline is at 9 foot, the ship's GM is at 1.9. Now let's do it again. All right, so now let's do it again, but here we want to solve for this cell and this cell. All right, now in order to do that, we're going to need this line and this line. So, switching around our colors here. To fill the second row here, we need the second row in WA. That's going to get plugged into here, which means we have 25920 divided by 2020. And then after we do that calculation, we're going to get 12.83. Then by doing the subtraction, we get 0 0.45 for that GM. So at 8 foot 6, our GM is 0.45. So at 8 foot 6, when the water line is at 8 foot 6, my GM is at 0 0.45. All right, and then you can just continue doing this all the way down. In order to find this value, we're just going to take this right here, 17.34, plug it into there. Two five nine two zero divided by 17.34, you're going to get 14.94. Then 13.42 minus 14.94, and that's going to give me negative 1.53. Then you can do it one more time for 7 foot 6, and you'll get a GM of negative 4.34. All right, so now that we've filled out our column for, G, for GV, now we can go and plot these. So let's go down a little bit. Now we need to plot. So let's take a look, if I can get my pen right here, change color to red. All right, so at nine foot, I'm looking right here, at nine foot, my GM equals 1.9. So I gotta find positive 1.9 up here. That's pretty simple. If this is plus one and this is plus two, then I just count from one and I'm going to get a dot right around here. All right. Now, I'm going to look up here at my 0 0.45. And that's at 8 foot 6. So, I got 8 foot 6. I'm going to plot 0 0.45. And that's going to be right around... Right about there. All right. Then we're going to do the same thing for 8 foot 0 and seven foot six. So once you do that, if you notice, for eight foot zero, you're gonna be plotting negative 1.53, and then for seven foot six, uh, it's actually way off the chart, so you don't even have to worry about seven, point, uh, seven foot six. We're gonna get something that looks like that right there. All right, so we have our dots going in pretty much a straight line. So we draw a straight line between them, and then see where it equals zero. There's zero, so right when that line crosses that center line right there. Draw a straight line over. And we're gonna read right off of that. So what we're reading here is that our GM equals zero when the waterline or when the draft of the ship is eight foot, 4.5 inches. All right, so that's how you find the critical draft of a ship using the stranding calculation sheet, as well as just a little bit of knowledge that we've already known from before. All right, so that does it for grounding and stranding, how to find the critical draft of a ship following a stranding event, 
how to understand tons of ground, you know, what that means for the ship, especially when it comes to lost displacement, and a couple other details in there. Uh, like I said, this is a new format to the videos I really like doing. Uh, it kind of lets me draw and animate things a little bit differently than using a whiteboard. Also, I can you know, take a day in drawing something, maybe it's example problems or whatever it might be, and then I can just do screen captures and I'm able to do videos much faster and get good, decent content out to you to help you in your studies. So let me know in the comments if you like this style, if you don't like this style, things about it you like, things about it you don't like, pros and cons, whatever it might be. It really helps me as well as future students in getting this information out and helping them pass D case and kind of refresh their memory when they get back to their ships. All right, so uh, with nothing else, I'm Lieutenant Timothy Mueller, and I hope you have a great day.